In the last video, we went over the time grid up top here. In this video, we're going to discuss the pitch grid right here. As you can see, I've already added some audio down here. And we're going to go over how to get audio inside Melodyne later on in the tutorials. For right now, let's focus on the pitch grid and the interface itself. If we go up to the top left hand corner of the window, the same way we did in the time grid, and we go to pitch grid, and then select no snap. If you concentrate on the left hand side, you'll see that there's no line separating my pitches. Now what does that mean? Well now if I move this note around, you'll recognize that the pitch doesn't actually adhere to a grid of any kind. So it's free to move around wherever you want. Go up to the top left hand corner and select semitone snap. Now that you select the semitone snap, you have lines separating all of your pitches in the pitch grid. Which is basically the same thing that happens when we activated and deactivated our time grid up top. When the time grid was deactivated, we had half lines, and then for the pitch grid, we have no lines when it's in no snap. In semitone snap, the note will stick to every note within a chromatic scale. That's how semitone snap works. Let's say you get tired of going up to the top left hand corner to switch your options for pitch snap and then going from no pitch snap to semitone snap. You can right click inside the pitch grid in order to change what you want to change. So you can go from no pitch snap to semitone snap uh, right there from the pitch grid. By right clicking in the time grid, you can also bring up a context sensitive menu for just the time grid. The only reason to go up to the top left hand box is to change your view options. Under semitone snap, we have the scale snap. Now the scale snap will react a little bit differently. As you can see, we have a bolded uh, B here, which is telling us that we are in the key of B. Above that are some grayed out notes that aren't really part of the scale. Beyond that, you have a C sharp and then a D sharp, which are in light gray, which are showing that that is actually part of the scale. Another way the program shows you which key the file is in is with the indentation underneath the B. The key of B is not randomly chosen. The program looks at the notes within the file and determines what key is appropriate for the file. In scale snap, you can only move a pitch within the notes that are in the scale. So now if we wanted to change the scale of the song, we would go to the pitch grid, right click, and then go to select scale. And now we can move around wherever we want. You can change the scale to whatever you feel like. But for now, let's go to B natural minor. And let's see how that sounds. When you're tuning your file, everything will adhere to the B natural minor scale now. The last thing to go over in the pitch grid is the reference pitch option. Now, this is something you should always check before you start tuning, but I left this for last because it's the most important. You see a couple of things in front of you right now. You have A440, and then you have a checkbox that says, make this the default. As a rule, I like to make sure that my make this the default is checked for A440. My theory behind it is that, let's say you work on a file from a guy in the Czech Republic and he tunes to A432. Now when you open up another file, A might be set to 432, and you might forget to turn it back to 440. At that point, you have to do a lot more work to get everything in A440. So I would rather work safe than have to redo all my work. Take some time to go over what we've done, go to your pitch snap and select no pitch snap and move notes around, then do the same thing with semitone snap and scale snap. Try to figure out the best way that works for you.